My name is Paras Arora. I'm a co-founder and CEO of a company called 3R Management. We primarily work in uh, environmental domain uh, and waste management. So guys, uh, we have listened a lot, uh, heard a lot uh, about climate change and environmental degradation. And there's a huge, uh, huge means a real outcry about it uh, globally. And uh, we are here discussing about ideas and deeds uh, accomplished so far uh, to be able to provide a good future to our upcoming generations. And I'm doing my bit uh, along with my lot of mates back in the company. I give you a, a brief uh, snippet about myself. Like uh, many uh, fortunate people in 2004, uh, I was working with an IT company. Uh, companies do send uh, people uh, back to, uh, back for on-site assignments. So I landed in US. So whatever I was doing in US, uh, apart from that, I was curious enough, inquisitive enough, and I was observing the way of living uh, back there in the Western world. Their consumption patterns. Uh, from the big uh, cup of coffee and cold drink to a completely heated and air-conditioned premises, homes. Uh, for example, if I am in any auditorium back in US or you know London, my friend is coming back. Uh, you won't feel a little cold, you know, the way we're feeling a little cold here. So they are energy guzzlers. They use dryers for drying uh, their clothes. Uh, back in India, we just soak our clothes uh, in open sun and we are happy about it. Uh, but there, every base, every apartment, every individual household has got a dryer, which has got an energy, which is energy guzzler. So this, this actually intrigued us. Uh, back in India, we are struggling with means, you know, uh, thinking what to do. And, you know, in cold, uh, we keep shivering all the day and uh, doing different kind of things. But they are, and for them, uh, that is actually a basic necessity of life. So while India was trying to find the ways to develop itself, and they were happy in consuming natural resources. So the idea is, this is the thing. So the more and more we consume, the more developed we are. Our development indices are based on how much consumption we do. And more the more consumption we do, more development happens, and uh, disproportionate amount of waste we generate in the system. So this picture says that, that more developed we are, more waste we will generate. This is the story of the developed world, and this is the story, and this is the story of the developing countries also, where we are striving to getting better and better in our uh, indices. So what is happening? While uh, we are developing, and we are developing technologies to uh, produce products, so that our masses can consume. So that if masses can consume something very affordable, uh, they will have better livelihoods. Now, in order to get developed, we are deploying those kind of technologies and producing core and affordable products, but we are increasing the complexities of whatever we are producing and consuming in our day-to-day -day -day lives. And that is where the problem is. Consumption is going uphill complexities of what we are consuming is also going uphill. Consumption versus technology. We are developing technologies to do, uh, to develop something which is consumable uh, by masses, but then we are not developing technologies to handle those complexities at the end of the day. What will happen uh, when those products will reach end of life? So those complexities are so much that we do not have processes and technologies uh, to address uh, that kind of a waste or to somehow bring them back in the value chain. So there is nothing as such. Uh, and there's a study, I, I got it from a website called uh, basura.com. If your econ economy wants to increase, let's say by a trillion dollar, then what kind of waste you will generate in the system? A trillion dollar economy will increase approximately six million tons of MSW, municipal solid waste, uh, annually in the system. And um, uh, another research which says that during this 20th century, how uh, development has happened. We have increased our GDP to 23 times, 
Our mineral extraction has gone to 27 times. Our fossil fuel consumption have gone to 12 times. Overall, whatever we have started extracting to get into that race of GDP, uh, almost eight to 10 times everything, whatever we extracted so far. And this is what is happening uh, on the name of development. So for example, uh, uh, if you look at India, India produces almost more than 60 million tons of waste additionally, uh, annually. So now we are in the race of becoming a three trillion, five trillion dollar economy. So you think about that, what will happen in near future. At this point in time, we are fighting with what to do with our current situation. But then as we grow, what kind of waste, what kind of complexities we have uh, to address. So think about that kind of uh, effort which is required from everybody. So uh, let me show you a couple of pictures. There are uh, numerous varieties of plastics. We have talked about it. Many of uh, our colleagues have talked about it. These plastics are not simple plastics. They, have, they are blended, they are complex plastics. And another thing is this, which we use in our day-to-day -day lives, multi-layered plastics. Everybody knows these kurkure packets, Maggie packets, biscuits, we go out, we buy this and that, we order food, everything, whatever we buy, has got uh, multi-layered plastic uh, as a packaging. And this is something which is so dangerous, it cannot be recycled. It has got so many metals and you know different kind of components, so complex. What we are doing at the end of the day, we are just burning it in the secondary applications. We have certain applications like road building, tiles and pavements, etc. these days, but that is it, uh, minimal usage. So what we're doing, we're consuming natural resource, uh, producing these kind of uh, stuff, and at the end of the day, just burning it in uh, something uh, very secondary and not able to get it back in the system. Take example of fast fashion. You open up any fashion website, you filter on the fabric type, and what you see? These many fabrics. Linen, cotton, polycotton. Earlier we used to have three, four types. We used to hear about it when we were, you know, small. Now we have so many type of textiles, uh, fabrics, viscose, rayon, polycotton, velvet, uh, what not, uh, flannel, satin, denim. Anyway, which is very much in use. So what has happened in the name of fast fashion? Now again, we are producing those kind of fabrics which can be consumed by masses. Complexities have increased. We are not able to recycle them. There is no technology as such. What we do, just shred the textile and somehow you know, use it for filling purposes or somewhere you know, burn it in kilns and different kind of secondary applications. This is a gigantic problem. Take example of electronic waste. Thanks to now a boom in IT industry, thanks to COVID outbreak and all sort of uh, things where we are now dependent on uh, digital means. Uh, the latest giant in the system is EV batteries. Uh, we do not have a technology to even uh, address the, uh, the previous lead acid batteries. Now we have another thing called uh, lithium ion batteries. Nothing has stabilized yet. And leave aside the technology to, uh, to address the end of life of these batteries which is going to come in next few years. So sustainability is happening. We are trying to do a uh, lot of things on the name of climate change, uh, producing different other things, but then we are not bothered what these newer things actually bringing on to table as a challenge for us. So this is what, uh, this is another study which says that India is the biggest recycler of plastics in the world, almost to the extent of 60%, but still, uh, we have these landfills. All kind of waste are piling up in the landfills. So this is where we got driven into this industry. In 2014, we started 3R management. Uh, at that point in time, uh, there was no company who was doing uh, any, any good. Uh, there were few handful companies who were into waste management and they were doing their own bids. Government was the own Government was the only prime uh, owner of waste management in India. There was no accountability on private sector. There was no accountability for whatever waste they generate or whatever products they produce to address their end of life, nothing as such. So at that point in time, we decided little uh, to do something 
a little different because we were exposed, we lived uh, abroad, uh, we came from IT industry. So we had that kind of understanding and we did certain planning. We came up with a decentralized waste management solutions in India. At that point in time, we were the pioneer of it. We started a couple of good projects back in Delhi and those projects later were uh, copied and you know replicated in various forms and shapes uh, and sizes uh, across the length and breadth of the country. They used to publish them as the best practices. Uh, so that's where we thought that uh, if we have to make a difference in this industry and manage based at that point in time, uh, we have to think differently, think innovative and think about technology. Otherwise, without that, it was not possible to move forward. So IT enablement is something which was very important initially as a first step to think about further what are we going to do in waste management. Why? Because unless and until we have got data in place, the biggest problem uh, which actually uh, hinders the standardization of the industry or any effort what we plan for waste management is the availability of data. So without data, who's Generating, generating what kind of a waste, uh, who is uh, handling it in the formal and informal sector, and uh, what kind of processes we have to deploy, nothing could be possible. So what we did, we developed our internal tools to collect data of waste recyclers, waste generators, uh, OEMs, uh, logistic partners, and uh, haulers, so all kind of stakeholders involved in the waste management, we actually collected the data and based on that data analytics, we planned our future course of action. So without data analytics, uh, nothing is possible if we plan to do anything uh, in any industry going to go uh, uh, you know, unaddressed. So even if we are doing uh, any uh, torrefaction or we are doing any other kind of a thing where people are producing different kind of newer products, Unless and until you know who's doing what at various locations, you cannot plan your actions. So very, very important. Data analytics is, plays a very important role. There are separate companies these days who are helping solution providers like us uh, to, uh, to plan up our uh, deeds and acts. So data analytics has got a pretty important role here. So based on that in 2014 and 15, uh, whatever data we collected, we decided to come up with a decentralized waste management and uh, based on our technology understanding and deep thinking, we went out to government and a lot of challenges we faced. Finally, we ended up getting some of the marquee projects and uh, uh, we, with all those uh, challenges we faced and uh, the plan we did, initially uh, after doing certain kind of smaller projects in Delhi, uh, we ended up getting a bigger projects in solid waste management. So what we have done so far is we have converted one union territory in India completely bin free place. So if you go there in that uh, locality, you will not find uh, common municipality bins as such. Uh, that project was inaugurated by Prime Minister uh, and uh, that project actually got us a recognition of a garbage guru uh, given by India Today a couple of years back. So uh, that was a success we have got. And after that, we created some of the marquee projects uh, at an altitude of 4,000 meter. We set up a municipal solid waste plant at uh, Ladakh. Now we are building the same kind of facility in Kargil. And which brings me back to the importance of process engineering, the kind of projects we did so far, especially in such a high altitude, that process engineering is very, very important. Unless and until you have got data uh, at first place about everything, and then you have to plan custom uh, engineering based on where you're doing such kind of projects. So we could achieve the success at such a high altitude uh, because we had those kind of initial planning in place, and we did a custom uh, modeling specifically at such a, such a place where you got a minus 15 degree uh, temperatures that we were able to uh, do composting and do uh, segregation and landfilling finally. It was not possible without that kind of planning and process engineering in place. 
not only process engineering, because the complexities of the materials have gotten so high, unless and until you combine certain kind of a human engineering in place also, because at the time of developing the product, if you develop also technology that how you will address the end of life of those products as well, then you will get a real success. But if you're doing half uh, way things, only producing products and not thinking about how you will address the waste, you will end up uh, definitely in a problem and this is what has actually happened so far. So a good uh, design engineering that at the end of the day, the raw materials, what you're using, the raw materials are sustainable or not, the product, the raw materials are recyclable or not, can you extract those raw materials back in the value chain or not? Considering all those things, you should uh, develop core products. So that human engineering part is also very important along with data analytics and process engineering. And this is uh, what I would say that whoever is designing uh, the products for general public to consume, they have to innovate. They have to think in an anti-fragility manner the way uh, I read one book, Nicholas Taleb has described pretty nicely, that you have to innovate based on local conditions. You have to come up with stupid and creative ideas. So far, what we are seeing, whatever technologies also we are seeing, technologies are coming up, fading up, because they are not able to you know, carry forward. They are not sustainable. Uh, they do a lot of hit and trials. But then at the end of the day, they fail. Uh, there are reasons to fail also. So idea is that practice as much as anti-fragility as possible. There's a whole lot of uh, ideas in this book, if somebody wants to read, you got a lot of inspiration around innovation and how do we think uh, to plan up new things. Uh, there's a fantastic book one should, one should read. And then the second thing that if we are designing uh, products, no blending will work. Blending is the killer. How much ever technologies we developed on the supply side, on the demand side, if we keep blending on the name of uh, fast fashion and you know fast consumption, it will not. Uh, serve the purpose at all. So we have to somehow uh, think differently, alternatively, uh, keep away from blending uh, uh, different materials to produce core products. Finally, recycling is the only solution because unless and until you have technologies to recycle, you focus on recycling. However, you have all those kind of efforts where you're doing waste reduction, you're doing different kind of community efforts, all those things are good. But then in near future, you cannot change the behavior of people overnight. You cannot change the paradigm of development, which we have been following so far. You have to focus on recycling. These are the takeaways from this discussion. Thank you very much.